this for a long time, which has been fabulous, right? It looks like we have 55 people on here right now, which is just great. Wow. People and um, wow, thank you all for showing up. And um, we um, are looking forward to Deborah's pre presentation. So, um, good evening to everybody. And for those of you that don't know who I am, uh, I am Wendy Myers. I'm the Director of Counseling at the Cancer Caring Center. And my two colleagues are on here with us. We have um, Jennifer Kem, who is the Director of Development and Liaison Manager. And then our Executive Director, uh, Rebecca Whitlinger, is here. So um, we want to welcome all of you on behalf of the Cancer Caring Center. Uh, the Cancer Caring Center has been a local nonprofit charity for over 30 years, providing free emotional support to cancer survivors and their loved ones. We have located in Bloomfield, um, but currently have been providing all of our services virtually since the beginning of COVID, which has been a fun challenge for us. And um, we probably wouldn't have been able to do this program at this uh, level at this time. Yeah. So this is a good thing for us, right? It's really important. So um, Jen's going to pull up our flyer so um, we can kind of go over all of the current services. So if anybody's not sure of us. The other thing I might ask you all too, if you can all mute um, yourselves. Um, if not, you'll have to invite me to dinner, although dinner hour's over, so maybe dessert. Um, <laughs> so if you can mute yourselves, that'd be awesome. Thank you very much. So our um, cancer services are up. Hopefully everybody can see them. And um, we have currently, um, all of these are online. Uh, my general support group is every Wednesday, um, usually at 5 p.m. And we have a variety of speakers a couple times a month on various topics, um, which has been very, they've been very well attended. And um, in the other um, Wednesdays, we actually have um, open discussion chats. That's gone on really, really mm -hmm. great. And then um, we have an ovarian cancer group, our brain tumor group, our African American women's cancer group. Um, we have a couple women's cancer groups um, that are general groups for women, a couple of breast cancer groups. We have a young women's breast cancer group that Jen facilitates, metastatic cancer groups for all types of cancer, head and neck cancers. A caregiver support group, which has been growing by leaps and bounds. And also um, we're able to have that now because you all don't have to leave your loved ones. You can just um, go upstairs and pop on uh, one of our meetings. A grief support group that my coworker, uh, Trish Campbell and I started, um, which is time limited and um, was our first session, which went amazingly well. Uh, we have a cognitive toolbox. Uh, those of you that attended my general group, John Goldane, he had, um, uh, tuned in and spoke at that group. And so we actually have a monthly cognitive um, group that helps them improve your mental functioning and your abilities. That's been very well attended as well. Then we go into our wellness programs. We have our nutritionist uh, nutrition class by Angela Zaccanini every month. Gentle movement and breathing by um, Sadie Grossman, um, who actually uh, also works at Hillman and does yoga. And our art therapy group by Brant Meehan. Um, that's um, starting to um, multiplying and grow too. That's been a great thing. And then of course, for those of you that know, um, I do uh, have been doing counseling online through my uh, 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 platform called Simple Practice. So I do individuals, couples, families. And um, so if anybody's in need of those kind of services, we certainly can do that. For those of you that don't want to do technology, I also do the traditional um, over the phone support counseling too. And then we, um, find, last but not least, we have a partnership with Reed Smith, which is a big law firm downtown. And they have been graciously offering us um, help uh, for free with patients um, with wills, power of attorneys, and advanced directives. So um, we're proud to have all of these services and um, you know, very excited that we do have them. Uh, we consider the Cancer Caring Center the hub for all of our cancer resources, as well as offering emotional support services through our support groups, wellness programs, and all the counseling. Uh, all of our services are also led by professionals within the healthcare and mental health field. And we're so very excited that you have chosen to share this evening with us and hope that you can join us tonight as well as next Wednesday uh, evening when we present our own Pittsburgh Radical Hope Thrivers. Um, Jen and I have compiled a list of um, our peeps, some of them I've known for over 25 years from my original support group in Cranberry. So we're excited to have them come and Deborah will be back again to help us moderate that. So um, Jen will now go over our evening Zoom etiquette, uh, which is important to um, get the best viewing for all of you guys and get your questions answered in a timely fashion um, for the question and answer part of our program before I introduce um, Deborah. So go ahead, Jen, you're on. 
Hello, everybody. We are so excited about tonight. This is, uh, and uh, as Wendy said, I'm Jennifer Kim, and uh, this we, we have been working on this for a long time. This is a great idea that Wendy had, and we're so excited to have uh, connected with Deborah. Um, so we're grateful that you chose to spend your Wednesday night with us, this Wednesday and next Wednesday. Just a couple uh, housekeeping tips. Um, you know, uh, Wendy had talked about, I don't know if everybody was on yet, but if you could please mute yourself. Uh, we are going to be recording. We are recording right now. And if your dog barks, you you all of a sudden become the largest video on the block. And so it, it, uh, it <laughs> it's for an unusual recording. So we'd appreciate it if you could mute yourself now, please. Um, and as, uh, another thing, uh, I think most of you registered either through Wendy or through the uh, hearing pgh at gmail.com address. If you have done that, that's great. If you have not, if you wouldn't mind, I will actually uh, put the uh, email address in the chat for you. Uh, we would just like to stay connected with you. We have we have sent out an email each week about all the programs that are upcoming, and uh, we'd just love to get feedback from you for tonight uh, and get some information. Um, so, and we are we have uh, Deborah has a, a pretty a wonderful presentation tonight, but and I'm sure you're going to have questions. Um, and you're welcome to post them in the chat throughout the, the session. We, we are going to, Deborah will address them after her presentation. So, uh, and we have a pretty large group, thankfully. So we have about 65 people already. So um, it's probably best for you just to put those questions in the chat and that way we can manage the situation a little bit better because we really can't see everybody um, on one screen. So it, it'll be far better. If you are coming in by phone, um, and you cannot uh, type a question in the chat, feel free to email me. You can email me at, um, actually, if you could do jen at cancercaring.org. Um, sometimes it does bounce back. So I'll put my, I can also put my cell phone. You can text me if, if you want to at 412-389-0488. Um, and now we'll, we'll head back to Wendy and she can introduce uh, Deborah. Sounds good. So now it is our pleasure to present Deborah Nozick, who will discuss the amazing inspirational findings and research of Dr. Kelly Turner's um, book. She has written two books, one by the name of Radical Remission and the latest one, Radical Hope, um, and their 10 healing factors. Uh, they're just amazing. So Deborah is a certified Radical Remission slash Hope teacher and coach. She's been working as a licensed social worker since 1978. She currently works as a psychotherapist in Albany, New York. Deborah has been a support group facilitator um, at Two Life, a breast cancer support and education organization similar to the Cancer Caring Center since 2007. Deborah was diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer in 1999 and is a radical remission survivor and thriver. She is a strong believer in the saying Believe in the diagnosis, not the prognosis. So please join us in welcoming Deborah. And we're going to bring up her slides now. Okay, can everybody hear me all right? Nope. Hold on, give me one second to uh, okay. set you up, Deborah. Went over there. Okay. Lucy. Okay. Have her in your room. Okay. Well, thank you, Wendy and Jen, so much. Can you hear me now? I'm on? It can. Is, is, okay. Uh, okay. Wendy, is Deborah the spotlight video or, is, or do you see more than that? I see the slides. The slides and Deborah, which is. Took it okay. Okay. And so, so I'm on now. I'm officially on. You are officially on. <laughs> Sorry, <I'm>, okay. <laughs> thank you for nope. letting me know. I'm, a, I'm, I'm officially on. Well, I, again, um, Wendy and Jen, thank you so much for making contact with me this summer. And I have so been looking forward to this moment tonight. Um, and I want to thank you all for being here with me tonight, because uh, I mean that from the very depth of my heart, because it was, as Wendy was saying, it was a little over 20 years ago um, that I was diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer. And for me to be here, who could ever in a million years have thought that 
20 years later after that diagnosis, that I would be here with you tonight, that I would be alive, that I would be well, and that I'd be on this weird thing that we're doing right now called Zoom. I mean, 20 years ago, could you even have imagined Zoom? <laughs> here we are. And Zoom's making it possible. I didn't have to tr travel to Pittsburgh. Um, we can be together, me sitting here in the comfort of my home here in Albany, New York, and all of you in wonderful Pittsburgh. So tonight, what I am going to attempt to do is um, kind of give you guys a brief history of what radical remission is all about, oh. my own personal journey, um, and tell you about the two books that you're seeing up there now, Radical Hope and Radical Remission by Dr. Kelly Turner, um, which um, I've gone through her, her uh, certification programs, and I'll tell you about that in a little while. And then after I kind of give you a little bit of the background and the history and what the 10 factors are, then at the end, as we said, I will open it up for your questions and answers. So, um, and I remember when I talked to Wendy way back this summer, she was saying that one of the main reasons that she really wanted to pull this together is she loves to give you all tools for your toolbox. And as I'm explaining the 10, can you go to the slide now with the 10 factors? Yeah, the 10 healing factors. These 10 healing factors, think of them as Wendy would call them, tools in your toolbox. So they include exercise, spiritual connection, empowering yourself, increasing positive emotions, following your intuition, releasing suppressed emotions, changing your diet, herbs and supplements, having strong reasons for living, and in increasing social supports. So I guess you can keep that one on while I give you a little bit of, I'm gonna give you all kind of just a, a very, 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 very brief history of my own journey uh, with cancer. Um, it, actually, my actual history is miles, miles long. So I'm gonna do this in a matter of like three minutes. Um, when I was 12 years old, my own mother was um, diagnosed with breast cancer. So I knew at a young age uh, what it's like to have a cancer diagnosis just totally change the trajectory of a whole family. Um, and then I became very cancer conscious at a young age too, uh, to the point where I kept almost expecting it to happen in my life to the point where uh, when I was in my 30s, I'd had my son, I was 36 years old, I had finished breastfeeding and there was no reason that there's nothing palpable, but I decided, you know what, I'm done breastfeeding, I better go in and just have a baseline mammogram done. So I went in and um, it, sure enough, there was a stage one breast cancer in my left breast. And I did the conventional uh, lumpectomy radiation and chemo. My prognosis was excellent. There was actually, nobody had any reason to believe I would ever have another problem for the rest of my life. Then I had seven years go by and um, I had seven well years. And then all of a sudden in the spring of 1999, um, I developed this cough and it just got more and more persistent. And nobody really thought anything of it. My, my primary gave me an antibiotic thinking maybe it was some kind of bronchitis or something. And it just kept getting worse and worse to the point where I had extreme shortness of breath. I couldn't walk up a flight of stairs without huffing and puffing. And that's when uh, my doctor decided to do a, um, a chest X-ray. And all they had to do was a chest X-ray and they could just see my whole lung was just filled with breast cancer tumors. Um, so I had to go into the hospital. They scoped my, my lung. They had to um, release, drain a huge amount of fluid, which was causing my shortness of breath. And I had to be in the hospital for, for almost a week. Now, as many of you who are also cancer survivors, thrivers know, getting that kind of diagnosis is earth shattering. And uh, it was for me too. Um, and then after the shock of the whole experience started to kind of calm down a little bit, 
I started to kind of toy with the concept of, I've got to believe this diagnosis. There's no way I can't believe the diagnosis, but maybe I don't have to really believe the prognosis, meaning most people hear uh, metastatic cancer and think of it as a death sentence. Um, and that kind of catapulted me. As soon as I started to think that, it catapulted me into a journey of wanting to get well and trying to figure out how am I going to do this? How am I going to get well? And I became a magnet for anything that had to do with healing and miracles and wellness. Um, and that led me to books like Spontaneous Healing by Dr. Andrew Weil, who is now known as kind of the father of integrative medicine, uh, to Dr. Bernie Siegel's book, Love Medicine and Miracles. And when I started reading books like that, it started to kind of give me a sense of hope, hope that it's possible to reverse even the most severe, most life-threatening illnesses. And then I started thinking, well, you know, maybe there is a chance, maybe there's a possibility I could be one of those people. So then I decided to um, use conventional, I personally did use conventional um, treatment, still to do to this day. Um, and my intuition though kicked in and told me, you really, Deb, you gotta do more than conventional medicine to get well. So I started to go on my own journey, started to pick up all different kinds of new things into my life and making changes into my life. Um, but I had to navigate my own journey because there was no roadmap at that moment in time. Um, and then I did whatever it was I was doing and I'm gonna kind of intersperse when I do all the different healing factors, I will tell you about something that I did under each of these different factors and kind of interweave them in there. So you will hear about some of the things that I've done through the years and still do today. But um, in 2014, there was a book that was published by Dr. Kelly Turner, and that was Radical Remission. And I must have been one of the first people to grab it, for, you know, from my local book bookstore, um, just sat down in a day, read the whole thing, and there were tears streaming down my face because I was thinking, oh my gosh, on my own, I, I've been doing these things, all these, now there's 10 things, all these things, and it was so validating because uh, I had to figure these things out totally on my own. But to know that she was doing the research and finding out that this is what other people were doing to get well made me feel like, wow, Deb, you really, you really did that? <laughs> I really have been doing that. So that's my like little nutshell of um, my story. It, I could write volumes about it, but that just gives you a little bit of an idea. So I want to tell you what is, first of all, what is radical remission? And um, according to Dr. Turner, who wrote the books, um, and first let me tell you about Dr. Turner. Dr. Turner was doing an oncological clinic um, internship when she was getting her doctorate at uh, Berkeley University in California. And she started to notice that there were some people who were anomalies, uh, people who were surviving cancer and doing very well, and some people who even reversed their cancer. And she started looking at the literature and noticing there wasn't a whole lot in there. She decided to make that her doctoral dissertation. So she literally spent 10 years doing what we call, there's quantitative research and there's qualitative research. She did qualitative research. She went around the world asking people who had these radical remissions, which I'll tell you what they are in a minute. Um, she asked each person one simple question, which is, why do you think you healed? And then she let them just tell their story. And what she found was that there were like 70, 80 commonalities with these people who had reversed their cancers. And then what she did is she took those and she whittled them down to some very common denominators. And that became her books. 
Um, and all, just keep in mind again, all of these factors that we're gonna to discuss tonight are hypotheses. They need a whole lot more research. As a matter of fact, thanks to Dr. Turner, Harvard, Harvard right now has a study going on, um, studying people who do the workshops to see where they are before, during, and after. Um, so the research is ongoing and she's, she's at the forefront of it right now. Um, so this is what radical remission is according to Dr. Turner in her book. Um, radical remissions occur whenever, number one, a person's cancer goes away without conventional medicine. Number two, um, a, a person's cancer goes away um, after someone attempts to use conventional medicine, does not go into remission, switches over to an alternative set of methods, and then goes into remission. And then the third way to go into radical remission is using conventional and alternative methods at the same time in order to outlive a statistically dire prognosis. Important to know again that these factors are not a cure for cancer. We cannot prove that they are a cure for cancer. We can say that these people that she interviewed reversed their cancer, it's provable but we can't say it's a cure for cancer. So I wanna be really, really clear from the onset about that. Um, what we can prove, because there's all kinds of research backing this up, is that these particular factors that you see in front of you can greatly, greatly, greatly help our immune systems. And the more we have a healthy immune system, the better our bodies are at being able to fight and fight and, and kill cancer cells. So that part is a given fact. So those are the 10 factors that I just expressed to you. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is ask for the next slide, which I think is, is it exercise and movement coming up next? <laughs> let's see what, let's see if it's a surprise or what I think it is. Next slide. I'm not sure why, but it's, it, it won't move. It won't move? Yep. Uh, oh. Oh no, it did before. I know. I do you want do, do you want me to just move do you want me to just move forward or wait, hold on. It? I think it I think it uh I moved backwards. Are you try your arrow buttons, Jen, too, if you're not using your mouse. Yeah, that, that's what I am using. Oh, okay. Actually, I'm, okay, that's okay. Time. You got it. Okay. So the first healing factor we're going to um, give a, like a highlight of is exercise and movement. Okay. All people, regardless of any particular diagnosis or any health condition, benefit from exercise and movement. Um, I think if we got rid of the word exercise, people would move more because a lot of people have a very negative connotation with exercise. But if you talk about movement, you talk about, well, I walked to, to the mailbox to get my mail. That's movement. It might be a little bit of movement, but it's movement. And when we were first on the face of the earth, we were hunters and gatherers. Our bodies are made to move. They need to move for our health and well-being. Unfortunately, over evolution to where we get today, we're very sedentary human beings. We're more, you know, it, it, it's just so hard for us today with the kind of lives we live to be able to add in movement into our lives. We sit on our <clears throat> most of every, every day. Um, and I read somewhere, I don't remember where, that sitting is now becoming the new smoking. It's that bad for our health. I know that the American Cancer Society has come out and said that um, movement and exercise definitely benefits um, cancer people. And um, in, in the book, Radical Hope, and exercise, yeah. just so you know, is the newest uh, factor that's in the book, Radical Hope. 
it's not in radical remission, it is in radical hope. And the radical remission survivors that are quoted in that book all reported that movement just is, it was the factor that helped, it was a factor that helped them get well. Um, and I think sometimes people don't even ha actually have to move their body, they can just visualize themselves moving their bodies in certain ways and that can be helpful in and of itself so even when we're very 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 ill and can barely move to picture ourselves hiking up a mountain or swimming in the lake or doing something um, that in involves some kind of movement that we like it helps um, in my own journey i started doing even when i was very symptomatic with this feeling that I had to cough all the time. Some of my friends were going to be going to um, an adult ed, very gentle yoga class. And I decided, you know what, I'm not going to let this cancer stop me. I'm going to do it with them. So I started out doing yoga way back in, in 99. And I remember how hard it was for me to hold different poses and do it without the urge to, to cough. But I just kept with it and people were very understanding because I sometimes did have to cough in the middle of a completely silent uh, yoga class. Um, but it did help me feel better. Um, oh, and somebody's just writing about restorative yoga because it's so, it's so relaxing and can be so healing too. So thank you, whoever just popped up with restorative yoga. Um, I become a big mover. I, before COVID, I, I went, religiously to my Zumba classes because I found them to be so much fun. I love mo moving to music. I power walk with friends and I've been able to continue to do that through COVID. And then I do some, because I can't go to my local Y right now, I started doing some online classes and I've actually incorporated some HIIT. Um, there's one thing you can even look up on your um, YouTube, um, the it's called the nitric oxide dump by Dr. Zach Bush. And it only takes four minutes to do. Although you're supposed to do those four minutes three times a day to get the full effect. So, oh, and don't forget about Tai Chi. Linda Forrester say, don't about, yes. Tai Chi, Qi Gong. Oh, I did, I've done Qi Gong, I've done Tai Chi. I've done almost everything that you can think of. The important thing with exercise and movement is Oh, oh, I hear somebody's dog. <laughs> the important thing with movement is the best movement for you is the one that you'll do. So remember that again, I'll say it again. The best movement for you is the one that you'll do. So the one that resonates the best for you, that you find the most comfortable, that makes you feel the best, that you find is fun. Those are the kinds of exercises and movements to do versus, oh, I got to do the treadmill today and I hate it. You know, it, it, you're, you're not going to do that on a regular basis. Not that some people don't love doing the treadmill, but whatever works for you is what to do. So I'm done with exercise. If you would like to move on to the next slide, which I think is deepening spiritual connection. Yes, it is. Okay. You see mind, body, spirit. Okay, now this is, somebody's dog is still with us, and I love dogs. <laughs> Whoever it is, <laughs> I think your dog needs a walk. <laughs> okay, oh, that's another thing, dog walking for exercise, there's nothing better than that. With spiritual, <laughs> with spiritual connection, um, it's actually a very delicate subject, because it means so many different things to different people. Um, for some people, it's a connection to God. For others, it's knowing we have a soul. In Chinese medicine, it's qi, energy flow. Um, and you could be agnostic or atheist and still feel a very deep connection to, to peaceful energy. Um, radical remission survivors in the book, Radical Remission, describe it as kind of a warm, peaceful energy that's kind of a blanket of deep peace and unconditional love. And each of us has our own unique 
ways of eliciting this kind of experience in our lives. For some people, it's prayer. For other people, it might be meditation, chanting, running. Yoga can be a spiritual experience. So again, for each of us, it's, it's having something that's meaningful to us. Um, and Dr. Turner talks about the radical remission survivor saying that this is a practice in one's life. It's not just something that you do every once in a while. It's, it's a habit. It's something you do on a routine basis. Um, with my own uh, journey, I started doing meditation many, many years ago uh, because I find that if I can kind of quiet my mind on a daily basis, that is extremely helpful. And I'll just mention, there's lots of different meditation out there, but there is one app that somebody got me turned on to called Insight Timer. Um, it's a free app. There's 50 million different kinds of meditation and then different amounts of time. Um, so if you only had five minutes free, you might pick something that's five minutes long and you can just experiment with all different kinds of things. So you don't have to join an ashram um, in order to start meditating. It's just something that you can pick up very easily for yourself, by yourself. Now, again, that was work, what worked well for me um, and uh, different, different strokes for different folks again. Uh, I think we're ready for the next slide. Oh, the app, uh, Susan wanted to know what the app was called again. Insight Timer, Insight Timer. You're welcome, Susan. <laughs> and now we're gonna go to empowering yourself, I think. Am I right? Next slide. Oops, sorry, I'm, I was just looking. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. There you go, sorry. Okay, yay, empowering ourselves. All right, now the actual word patient comes from the Latin root pate, P-A-T-I, which actually means suffer, allow, submit. So there's two different kinds of patients. I don't know which kind of patient you are. I'm, I, <laughs> I'm the annoying patient. I am the kind of patient who comes into a doctor's office with all my questions written out and I've got 50 million questions. Um, so we're the annoying patient. We have questions, we wanna research things. We may even wanna challenge actual medical advice. And then there are patients who are the good patients and whatever their doctor says, okay, if that's what you think to, I need to do, that's what I'm gonna do. What Dr. Turner found in her research is that radical remission, survi radical remission survivors um, take, whoop. I'm sorry, I cannot find who, who, who is not muted. I apologize. It's okay, it's okay, it happens. I, well, it shouldn't be happening. No. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, okay, go back, go back to empowering. Listen, everybody. Okay, I'll, I'll continue with empowering yourself. Um, that's where we're at now, I think. Right, so, so the, um, you can, someone says you can, you can mute the whole group if you want. That mutes you though. Oh, okay, no, you I'll, don't want to mute. You don't want to mute. You, you can mute everybody, Jen, and then unmute Deborah. Okay, I can't find the the mute everybody function though, unfortunately. Do you want me to just continue while you do that or wait? Okay. Um, should I continue? Here, I'm sorry, I see it, I think. Okay, I'll just, I'll just continue. Okay, so sorry about that. Where, oh, it's okay. Um, okay, so what Dr. Turner found was that the radical remission survivors reported that they took a very active versus passive role in their medical care and in other aspects of their lives, and that they had a real strong willingness to change. They could analyze their lives and 
decide, oh my God, you know, I've been working 60, 70 hours a week. No wonder I'm getting sick. Um, maybe I need to change that aspect of my life so I can get some rest. So that's an empowerment to be able to take a look at one's life and figure out what do I need to change? What do I need to adjust to take care of myself? Um, and then when we start taking care of ourselves, what a lot of radical remission survivors report is that we start to get resistance from other people. Um, other people sometimes don't like us to change, even if they're complaining about us, they don't like us to change. So part of empowering yourself is kind of preparing yourself and learning ways to be able to stay the course for yourself, even when you're starting to get a lot of resistance and criticism from other people. Uh, in terms of my own journey, again, um, one of the things I did to empower myself was make sure to it that I had what I called my A team, uh, my medical team, um, were people that were willing to really listen to my input. Um, it was really important to me from the onset to keep my immune system strong, even though I was going to be doing treatment. And I, I was very fortunate to have an oncologist at the time who was willing to kind of modify things in such a way so that I, I kept my immune system strong the whole time I, I was doing active treatment. Now we can move on to um, increasing positive emotions. Okay. Um, okay. I have a great quote from Eleanor Roosevelt, which is happiness is not a goal. It is a byproduct. So in essence, we always think, well, once I lose the 20 pounds, then I'll be happy. Once I find the love of my life, then I'll be happy. Once I don't have cancer anymore, then I'll be happy. Well, I hate to tell you, but that's bullshit. Um, it finding happiness or positive emotions in our lives in the here and now is so important. And it's almost like a muscle that needs to be exercised again on a daily basis. Now, we're not talking about, you know, here we have this very serious diagnosis and we're really feeling anxious and depressed. We don't, it doesn't mean that we have to be happy 24 seven, even though we have this diagnosis. What it means is we want to insert something, even for five minutes in our lives on a daily basis that gives us a sense of, of pleasant, some kind of contentment or satisfaction or joy or enjoyment, something that increases our positive emotions. Uh, because it's actually good medicine for us to increase our positive emotions. When we're feeling positive emotions, it floods our bodies with healing hormones, um, oxytocin, endorphins, dopamine, serotonin, um, endorphins. It, it all boosts all those great happy hormones for our, our um, immune systems. For me, um, what I really found was a big, big help for me was hugs. Either giving or getting a 10 second hug would be an oxytocin rush for me or me getting kisses from my, my very precious at that time. I know we keep, there's a reason we keep hearing a dog in the background because I love dogs. I miss my dog, Daisy, who was probably part of my healing at the time because she just gave me this oxytocin surge of bliss and joy, just being in her presence and having her love me unconditionally. Um, so there's all different kinds of things that people can, again, we're all different. We resonate with different things, but you know, some examples of things that give people that increased emo positive emotion might be gardening or singing or dancing or cooking or talking to a good friend or watching funny shows. Like, oh, I'll give an example to my, my dear sister who lives out in California. She's also a breast cancer survivor, thriver. And she would tell me stories about how uh, when she would come home from her treatment, um, she and her husband would come in and sit down in, on the comfortable couch and watch Everyone Loves Raymond. And they would do that every time so that they would laugh, that that just made them laugh. And laughter is such an important thing. Um, some people may have heard of laughter yoga. 
too. There's so many different things that are out there that can give us that little respite of increasing our positive emotions. Okay, I'm ready for following your intuition. Okay. Oh, and I've got two quotes to give you from Albert Einstein. Here is one. The only real value thing is intuition. Um, I love that one. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy, for putting that one up. Um, Dr. Turner, when she was interviewing radical remission survivors, again, found that they relied heavily on following their intuition. Um, and you might think of your intuition as kind of your sixth sense that they talk about a lot. And it's actually a physiological thing. It's located in two parts of our bodies. Part of it is that lower part of the brain, the reptilian part of the brain, um, that when it gets activated because we're, we believe we're in danger, um, the fight, flight, freeze response that we have is part of our intuition, which we, if we didn't have it, we wouldn't survive. Um, and also our gut. Our gut has 100 million neurons, the same kind of spells that are in our brain are also in our gut. So what the, it's almost like your gut is, is another form of the brain in terms of your intuition. You've probably heard the phrase, that gut reaction. So um, listen to your gut reactions, real important. Um, my gut, again, I said at the very beginning, my gut told me that I really needed to do more than conventional medicine. Um, and what I found, and this is important to, to underscore for all of you, I didn't start out doing all of these factors all at once and get immediate results. Okay, in terms of my own journey, it was doing one little baby step at a time and then just kind of kept building on them slowly, slowly, slowly. Now that was me. There might be some people that have a very different um, journey, but that's what happened. And I just kept using my intuition to tell me which direction to go in next. And really, again, listen to my gut on that. Now we're ready to move on to uh, releasing suppressed emotions. Okay. I love this quote from Mark Twain. Mark Twain said, anger is an acid that does more harm to the vessel in which it is stored than onto anything in which it is poured. So what, basically he was talking about holding, holding on to suppressed emotions. Um, Dr. Turner found that the radical remission survivors believed that illness um, or dis-ease <laughs> is a blockage on either the physical, emotional, or spiritual level of our being. And that they see health being achieved when we are able to unrestrict the movement in these three levels. And it is important to underscore, because I don't want to give you false thinking about suppressed emotions. Negative emotions or suppressed emotions do not cause cancer. Do not cause cancer. However, finding ways to release them can be very helpful for us um, because when we hold on to them, they can eat, kind of eat us up inside. But even happy memories, nostalgic memories that are held on to in a suppressed way can work against us too and keep us very stuck. Um, and so, one of the ideas that Dr. Turner talks about in Radical Remission is to think of your feelings as just your feelings. And they're important and they're telling us something. And to be aware of them and acknowledge them and honor them. And then do something like a waterfall, you know, where you're thinking of yourself under a waterfall where it's just kind of the motions are there and they're just washing through you rather than accumulating. Because when we don't let those kinds of feelings accumulate, we can experience each moment that we're in from a, a more neutral place. Now, I am a social worker and a therapist. So in my own journey, after getting this diagnosis, I would put that diagnosis as a, as a trauma reaction. 
um, even being a therapist, I knew I needed help. So I did go for my own therapy because I very definitively wanted to release the trauma of the diagnosis so that I could free myself up to do the healing that I wanted to be doing. So I was very fortunate way back in the day to have a, um, I found a therapist that I didn't know personally, which I think is always a good idea. You don't want one of your friends to be your therapist. And she was able through some techniques that I really wanted to have. I, I'm a big believer in energy psychology techniques. Um, EMDR can be an excellent way to remove uh, traumatic feelings and memories. Um, and so she did a lot of work with me and it, I think it really did help to release the trauma of the diagnosis. Um, and oh, well, yeah, EFT, thank you, Annie V. Yes, I am actually certified in EFT myself. It's an energy psychology technique. There's a whole bunch of them. EFT is definitely one of the ones that is one of my favorites. Um, and it's a real, mind body kind of kind of therapy um and even in 99 i actually got trained in thought field therapy which was the predecessor to eft i was already certified in thought field therapy and wanted somebody to do energy psychology with me from the onset so i'm a big believer in it i've been using it both for myself and with my clients for years and years and years. Um, a very effective form of therapy, highly recommend it. I think we're ready to move on now to radically changing diet. Another quote from the father of medicine, Hippocrates said that, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. How different that is from the standard American diet. <laughs> so different. Um, Dr. Turner told, told in her book that radical remission survivors did certain things radically changing with their diets. Um, they greatly reduced and in some cases eliminated meat, wheat, sweets, and dairy. And they really upped and increased substantially eating veggies and fruits. So if you actually looked at a plate, it's mostly fruits and vegetables and a little bit of protein and a little bit of carb. Um, and they also would eat organically as much as possible. So the, the toxins, the pesticides and um, all the, the stuff that is in our standard American diet wasn't getting ingested and also drinking filtered water. Um, there's been a lot of research and she writes about it in the book again, that our immune system kind of starts and stops right in the gut. So you, some of you may have heard of the microbiome, which actually our, our whole body is a microbiome, but, we, but food can have a big, big impact on having a healthy microbiome. And again, how we eat is a very individual thing. Um, it's important to get, especially being a cancer person, to get um, professional consultation with someone because a particular way of eating for one person might be very beneficial, but that same eating plan might be horrible for another individual. So you really do need to get help, um, not just pick something out of the blue and say, I'm going to do that, um, to get real help so that you're doing something that's really going to be beneficial for your body. Um, I was very fortunate in my journey. Again, um, I was actually at, um, what about ionized water filters? I guess that would, I don't know about ionized water filters, but whatever helps you drink as clean water as we can possibly drink, whatever that is that helps has got to be good for us. So again, on my journey, um, the organization that's here in my community, which is oh, kind of like yours and what wonderful things that these organizations are because it was thanks to my organization that I started getting well too. It, it, it was a big player. They had a woman speak who is an oncological nurse um, who had also gotten certification in nutrition for people with cancer. 
So I started to consult with her. She was the perfect person for me to consult with. Um, and I didn't like to hear what she had to say that I needed to change. Uh, one of the biggies was, sorry, Deb, no more refined sugar. No more, sorry, and no more processed foods. Um, so that's an example of something I made a, a big decision to radically change. I did a whole lot of other things too, but the thing I was gonna mention is that um, I really, really, I was almost religious about it. I was looking at every label to make sure there was no refined sugar in anything I was eating. I, I was believing, and there's different studies that show different things, but there are studies that show that refined sugar feeds cancer cells. And if, that, if the possibility is that that's true, one of the ways I could empower myself is to stop eating refined sugar. So there would be no chance of me feeding those cells with sugar. Again, we don't know if it's for sure or not, but I figured, you know what? It can't hurt for me to stop eating refined sugar. And I committed myself. So now when I see pastries and cakes and things that really used to turn me on and get me to salivate, um, I don't desire those things at all. I would prefer a juicy pineapple um, to anything in the world. To me, that is delicious. Juicy pineapple, cake, eh. Okay, let's move on to taking herbs and supplements. Thanks. Okay, when Dr. Turner did her research again, she found that radical remission survivors believe that in order to get rid of cancer, you kind of have to change the terrain of your body to make your body inhospitable for cancer to grow. Um, in the book, Radical Remission Survivor, she talks about an example like mold in the basement. You can, you can get rid of the mold in the basement with bleach. You can kill it with the bleach. But if the, if the environment remains the same, um, with humidity and lack of light, the odds are pretty good that it's gonna grow back again. So again, radical remission survivors believe you change the terrain, you become inhospitable to cancer cells. Um, again, there's no magic bullet when it comes to herbs and supplements either. Um, each individual body is its own individual self. And again, what one person might really benefit from, another person could actually have it could have harmful effects. So this, this and changing diet are two areas that it is best to get professional consultation. The other ones, you can pretty much do whatever you want on your own, but these two, it's really important to get help. And oftentimes you can um, get help from herbalists, nutritionists, certified nutritionists, naturopaths, uh, functional medical physicians, um, and testing is really important. Um, and I'll talk about testing in me in a minute because I have my own journey with that to tell you. Uh, but again, the radical remission survivors found that um, using herbs and supplements was kind of another factor that helped them to detoxify all the toxins their bodies were getting exposed to, could help low immune systems get boosted or just kind of make it a healthy immune system. And um, there's herbs and supplements that can help heal and correct digestion problems. The same oncological nurse that was helping me with um, my eating, my, my food, also was able to help me with herbs and supplements. And one of the things that we did was test my vitamin D3 level I was deficient. I was way down to 19. And there's a lot of studies out there that are showing that there's a correlation between vitamin D levels and cancer, that many cancer people have very depleted vitamin D levels. So we did. We got my vitamin D levels up very easily uh, because you can supplement with vitamin D. And then I keep mine at a very high level. And then I keep getting tested. Testing for almost everything is important. Um, and um, I, I missed the chat, but okay. So 
Uh, that's just an example of something. There's a myriad of things under herbs and supplements. And if you check her book, she gives some basic categories, again, for detox, boosting immune system and healing and correcting digestion. Okay, let's move. We're, oh my God, it's after eight o'clock. We've got to move along. Uh, having strong reasons for living. And I like this quote from the tainted butterfly. Sometimes bad things happen in life. Open your eyes to the good things you should treasure every moment. Okay. Um, so Dr. Turner's research showed that radical remission survivors um, did not want to die. And, and that was, it was more that they wanted to live. That was the important thing. They didn't so much have a fear of death as a, a zest for life. And again, that diagnosis of, of cancer is a wake up call for all of us to kind of reflect and to learn how to take charge of our lives so that we can make our lives, whatever time we have left, meaningful, enjoyable. Um, so being able to focus on joy, on meaning, on purpose, also is another thing that physiologically changes us from the fight, flight, freeze response to the rest and, respair, rest and repair response. Um, you know, I, my son was in, first and second grade when I was first diagnosed. And uh, actually I was, he, I was, he was in second grade. And my memory of having a strong reason for living was, I was actually in the hospital that I was telling you about for a week, having my, my uh, lung drained and having had surgery. And I was determined, I had to be out of the hospital in enough time to be there for my son to sing, if I only had a brain, he was the scarecrow in his Wizard of Oz play at school. And I remember we got me there just in the nick of time. I was there. I got to see it probably one of the proudest moments of my life, seeing my son up on stage singing If I Only Had a Brain. And he was so hysterically funny. He literally brought down the house. Um, but I was determined to be there. And I was determined I really wanted to be there for all of my son's big life milestones. And he is about, to, he just turned 30 and he's engaged and he's planning to get married. But thanks to COVID, I don't know if my dream of dancing at, with him at his wedding is going to happen because of COVID, but, <laughs> but, uh, but I will be at his wedding. I know I will be at his wedding. Um, and hopefully we'll be there for many other milestones to come. So uh, for me, that was a strong reason to be here. Um, and again, we're all different in terms of what we can find in our lives that give us a sense of meaning and purpose. And then the last one, uh, last slide, um, is increasing and embracing our social support. And you guys are doing that factor this minute as we speak. Um, just being a part of your group is embracing social support. And we humans have, we're social creatures and we are hardwired to bond. And if we didn't have that high hardwiring to bond, we would, we would die out as a species. Uh, because we are so dependent as babies. Um, look at the difference between us and a, and a baby giraffe. A baby giraffe is born and they're up and walking and doing everything within hours after birth. Look at how long it takes our babies to get up and walking and they might not even be independent by the time they're 30. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but it takes a long time to go from helplessness to independence. So we need that bond in order to survive. Um, and what, again, what Dr. Turner found was that radical remission survivors believe um, that the love, it, that they can give love easily. It's hard for them to receive love. And it's important to learn how to become the receiver of love. And becoming a receiver of love also helps the body to heal. 
So we don't want to be alone. We do want to feel as the picture shows, I love your picture, Wendy, of embracing each other, at least virtually embracing each other. Um, and cancer people, I don't know about you, uh, but cancer people are typically expert at giving help and support. I don't, I, I've never done a statistical analysis about it, but I have a very strong feeling that, that that's pretty common. Um, so the experience of cancer can teach us to get better and better at accepting support and asking for help every once in a while when we need help too. And speaking of that, if you purchase the book and get the book, um, Radical Hope, and you go to page 274, you're actually going to see Dr. Turner used a quote from me in that part of the book. So you can actually see me in the book a little bit about me in Radical Hope. And then I'm going to end this whole 10 factors with a quote from Albert Einstein that kind of pulls everything we just said together, which is learn from yesterday, live for today, and hope for tomorrow. And I will end that with a little thing that I heard somewhere, I, don't, I, I can't tell you where I heard it, but always remember that the future comes one day at a time. My quote that I've been using, oh, you want me to repeat Albert Einstein? Okay. Albert Einstein said, learn from yesterday, live for today, hope for tomorrow. And then the part about living for today, I, I saw a quote that says, always remember the future comes one day at a time. And the quote that I'm living right now, I'll share with, it's my motto that it's partly an AA saying, along with something I added for a little, uh, little extra um, rhyme, which during getting through COVID right now, which we're all struggling to get through on top of everything else is one day at a time. And then I added a little extra to it. And right now I'm fine. So that is the end of my presentation. And we still have some time left. So you guys tell me how you want to do the questions and answers now. And I'd be happy to do my best to answer any questions that anybody has. And I'm sorry, I, I just rammed through a lot of material. So oh, I hope you're all okay with that. Thank you for the thank yous. Mm -hmm. We, and if, does anybody have any questions? Do you wanna write them in the chat since we have a fair amount of people here tonight? Um, <laughs> Oh, I have one question, Deborah. Like, what, um, what exactly is a, um, like, how, how, how would one work with you if, as a, um, as a radical remission coach? I mean, how does, how does that process work? Okay, I have. If anybody, I'll, I'll give you my um, email. Well, first of all, you everybody can look up the radicalremission dot com. And I'm listed in two ways under radicalremission.com. One is a radical remission teacher, and one is as a radical remission coach. So if you forget my, I'm going to give you my email address, which is dm as in moose nozick at gmail.com. And if anybody's interested, you can email me and I'll give you the information. I, I am offering coaching right now. I'm not offering any workshops right now because I used to do in-person workshops. Those are on hold. The Radical Remission Project, though, is periodically offering um, online live stream workshops. There's one that's just finishing up this week. And then I know that sometime this winter, they're probably going to um, offer another one sometime this winter. And I was a teacher there was one that we did in the spring right after COVID kicked in and I was a teacher for that one. So that's another way you may end up seeing me again too is with the Radical Remission online workshops and their offerings. But if anybody's interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, I can give you more information um, on, on how we would go about doing that. I would be doing it on a 
a HIPAA compliant uh, video. And um, we usually contract for either one session or a package of sessions. Um, so if you're interested in that, please feel free to contact me and I can make personal contact with you and, and answer more specific questions about that. Uh, Deborah, you might see in the chat, um, Marissa says, interested in which herbs and supplements you found helpful, even though everyone is different. Um, okay, as long as you understand everyone is different, because I might tell you that I did something that might not be good for you. Um, but again, I, I followed what this nurse told me. And also, um, Dr. Andrew Weil, I was reading his material way back in 99. And one of the things that he was recommending to people who, um, who were going through chemotherapy was uh, taking milk thistle to cleanse the, um, keep the, the liver clean. So that was something, and I, I would, whatever I did, I always checked with my doctor first. I didn't just do it. So I've been taking milk thistle forever um, for that. Curcumin is another thing more recently that I've come upon that's supposed to be really good for the immune system and for all different kinds of issues. Some of the different um, mushrooms are supposed to be good for all of the different immune conditions too. There's, there's bazillions of them. I, I can't really tell you. I take <laughs> the box. I have two, you know, the, the Monday through Sunday boxes. Actually, I'm only on one medication right now. Um, and then everything else I take is an urban supplement. And, and there's just so many of them. Um, but I can't speak to the one that you, the chat just came up with. I can't speak to that. But those are just some examples of some of the things that I've been doing through the years. And again, I'm not, I'm not um, recommending them because you have to find out what would be good for you. There's another so, question, Deborah, um, about the difference between, um, I recently read Radical Remission and I really liked it. it. How is Radical Hope different? Okay, well, Radical Hope is very much the same as Radical Remission. The Radical Remission was written in 2014 uh, Radical Hope just came out this April. So what Dr. Turner did is she updated everything. She got the newest research for each and every one of the factors. She added on exercise and movement as a 10th factor. And she got, um, what she does with both books is she has a Radical Remission survivor story. So this Radical Hope has 10 different stories um, than the first book does. And uh, what's the next question? Does, I don't know, does that answer the question? Uh, what's qualitative? Are there, are there quantitative uh, studies on radical remission? No, there's no quantitative studies yet. And, and it would be hard to do quantitative studies because this is people's reporting of things which is different. It's more like if you're a sociologist and what you're studying is very different than what a microbiologist is going to be studying quantitatively. So um, it, the Harvard study, what they're doing right now is they're taking people who are about to do the workshop, but it's still qualitative. Um, and they're, they're filling out all these surveys before they take the workshop. Then they're doing surveying during the workshop and then they're doing over a span of time um, more surveys and what they're checking to see is what impact and quality of life and whatever uh, the radical rem uh, remission workshop is having for that particular person. And actually I think they've got enough people that have been respondent to it now that they're actually finishing up the, um, the research. So that's a whole, that's to the Harvard I um, can't remember the name of the department there, but Harvard studying it as we speak. But that won't be quantitative, that'll be qualitative also. It's just that kind of work that's done. And uh, Deborah, like if you, uh, you know, you have these 10 areas and like, what if you're weak in all those areas? Like, wh where would you start? Or okay, I would start with a baby step. Just pick something that resonates the most for you, something you really, really want to change in your life. 
one thing you want to change and even on a small scale and that gets the ball rolling does it kind of answer the question the person asked asked it because many of us aren't doing hardly anything so just to do something and something that you're really interested in and really want to do to me that's the most important aspect of it not because you feel you should do it and have to do it do it because you want to do it there's a question what is the best way to find someone to work with on your nutritional supplements um, that would be very regional again and or um, there are people who are doing it nationally now that are offering themselves um, uh, via telehealth. So, um, you know, like if you're in the Pittsburgh area to see who's in your region, if it's, if it's going to be somebody you're going to work with on the, you know, face to, well, you probably won't do face to face right now either. Um, but there are people um, that are talked about in the book. Um, there's a Dr. Nasha Winters um, that can be looked up. There is one of my colleagues with Radical Remission is a certified nutritionist. Um, so those people are out there. We just take some research to find somebody who's qualified. There's a, another question too, Deborah says, have you heard of urolithin A? I haven't heard of that one. And then after reading the first, I found the stories to be the best part of the second. How did you react to the resistance when you started changing? Um, well, <laughs> a good question. I like that question because, again, it depends so much on who the people are that you're dealing with. Um, oh, somebody said something about Nisha Winters. Yes. Okay. Um, what was I going to say? It, it, if you're having difficulty with that kind of thing, that might be something to seek a therapist to help you with. There might be some relationship issues that are making it harder, beliefs about yourself that are making it hard for you to take a stand. There's an excellent book though, because um, you know I'm 65 years old. Um, so, <laughs> believe me, I'm 65, so I've been doing a lot over many years, but there's an excellent book I would recommend for anybody to read regarding this issue, which was written by Dr. Harriet Lerner in the 1980s. Um, but I think she's got some revised editions and that is The Dance of Anger. Mm. Highly recommend that book as Good a self-help book. book, as a self-help book to kind of help you envision what, what would I do if I wanted to stand up for myself. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a question. It's, it's, oh, it's supposed to be brand new. You're, I know, I don't know how to pronounce this. Urethane A. Um, I saw it in the doctor's pharmacy. I, I think Martin was just commenting on that. Um, mm -hmm. and, then, and then, um, somebody also says I'm hormone positive and so many things are off limits for them. Any suggestions for that at all? Um, I, I can't give any suggestions regarding anything you're going to ingest. <laughs> I can't give any suggestions. What I can tell you, tell you about is another resource, though. Okay. Um, uh, oh, I'm having one of those brain freezes. Sloan Kettering um, has a, uh, a site you can go to through MSK that you could plug in any herb or supplement and it will give you all the information you need to know about it and potential interactions regarding cancer treatments. That's a really excellent resource. So actually any of the questions you would ask me, go to that site and look it up. One of my clients just used that last week and it really, um, the doctor sat down with her to use it and it really um, was helpful because she was taking, this is interesting too, she was taking a uh, hormone replacement and AI inhibitor uh, post breast cancer, and she was um, then taking um, turmeric um, through a capsule. Mm -hmm. And there was actually the when they plugged that in, turmeric was actually um, taking the effects of the AI inhibitor away. Right. I would. I'm glad. I'm glad we're. I'm glad we're talking about it because I definitely would recommend always checking that site whenever you're going to do anything, uh, because that's through 
Memorial Sloan Kettering, and they're, they're experts on cancer treatment. So there's a lot of information you can pull from them. What's that website again, Deborah? Do you know that website? So if you, if you go to MSK and then, um, oh, I'm not sure exactly how you, but the, they're going to have something that we'd have to look it up. I know I have it somewhere, um, but it's through, it's through the MSK and then it's herbs and MSK, supplements. Just, just so everybody knows it's Memorial Sloan Kettering Hospital in New York City. I don't know if somebody can look it. I can't look it up right now because I'm on my device, but if somebody- no, I can look, look it, it up, up for you. Yeah, let me look it thing. up. Yeah. And you have to sign in for it, I think. But it's easy to do. But I would say, in terms of all of your questions regarding herbs and supplements, always refer back to that. Because it's true. Something might supposedly be very healthy, but you might find out that it, it would have a contraindication with what you're taking already. It's called herbs. Uh -huh. On the site from Krista. Thank you, Krista. And you'll be amazed at how much is up there. And that it's a good thing too, because it gives you something from a cancer center to bring into your own doctor. Mm -hmm. And there's currently awaiting a nutrition genome. Are you familiar with the nutrition genome test? Mm, no. <laughs> no, I'm not. I have to be honest. It sounds interesting, though. I, I'm wondering what it is. I'm guessing that it um, helps you figure out which foods are good for you and which foods are bad for you. Annie, if you, if you want to unmute yourself, you can talk. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's something I actually found out through a Facebook group, which Dr. Winters is really active in, and um, mm -hmm. so it'll go through based on your blood. It will help figure out all your SNPs, and that's um, different stuff in your DNA that mm -hmm. says like, oh, your body has a hard time processing out these uh, toxins, or you know, you your body because of this wild type heterogeneous or homogeneous type, you have a harder time getting like say vitamin A from eating all your orange okay. vegetables, stuff like that. Oh, thank you. Totally for, thank you. <laughs> thank you. You said that very well. And, and again, Dr. Nasha is available nationally, Nasha Winters. And you, you sound like you're very familiar with her. Um, I actually saw her speak on radically changing her diet and herbs and supplements. Um, I got familiarized with her because she came, remember I said I went to that workshop in 2016 with Dr. Turner at Omega Institute and Dr. Nasha was there to explain those two things. So uh, I know she's done phenomenal work and I know she offers services and has certified practitioners online. Yeah, definitely. So that, that would be a good resource too if there's nobody that you can find in Pittsburgh. If anybody is interested, the Facebook site, which I found all this stuff, is called um, Breast Cancer Integrative Healing, and then kind of in parentheses, it says Integrative Tribe. Mm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I th is, nobody else has any questions? Well, this has been fantastic, Deborah. We really appreciate all your time. We appreciate everybody coming tonight. Um, oh, it's been my pleasure. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's a, a fantastic group with a lot of great questions. Um, I just wanted to remind you, my, remind everybody that next week it is the same link, uh, same Zoom link, so don't delete that. And um, if if you if we still can, um, you know, have new folks join us. If they didn't join us tonight, they're still welcome to. Next week, just if if you want to share the link, just make sure that they register with us so that we know who's uh, joining us. Um, and we, everything we do at the Cancer Caring Center is free of charge. Uh, we would love to help you in any way we can. If you 
uh, are interested, you know, Wendy, uh, not everybody was on the first few minutes, but Wendy uh, talked about all the free resources we have. We have free private therapy with Wendy. We have um, uh, 32 different Zoom groups over the course of the, each month, a lot of wellness programs, so we'd be happy to help you. Um, we also, uh, if, you're, if you're interested in, in making a donation, we are a nonprofit. You can go to our website and donate if, if, uh, if that interests you. Um, and then, I don't know, Wendy, do you have anything else you want to share? No, I just want to thank Deborah and everybody else that uh, was able to attend tonight. And uh, hopefully you'll join us next week and continue to get more hope and more, um, uh, you know, information from our local peeps here in Pittsburgh who are um, also, like Deborah's story, very inspirational. And um, we look forward to hearing from all of them. And a lot of them joined us this evening. So we're glad that they are here and joining us and look forward to their stories next week. So thanks again, Deborah, and thanks everybody. Thank you. Oh, I did want to. I just I did want to mention that uh, Heather was kind enough to buy, and I don't know if Heather's still on here. Uh, Malarchuk uh, was generous enough to buy books for a lot of the speakers that are coming next week. So I just wanted to thank her. I re really appreciate that. And um, I think that's about it. Thank you. Be well, everyone. All right. We'll see you, you next too. Wednesday you. at seven everyone.